Hello viewers, this is Paladin of Odin, and this is some more Magic the Gathering Online. This is another episode of the Standard Commentary Series, and it looks like we have... Is it Control versus Golgari Aggro? Is it currently has Fevered Visions? And Golgari currently has Gifted Aetherborn. Is it throws out a Cathartic Reunion, discarding Advanced... Advanced Stitchwing and Stitchwing Scobs, so he has three creatures in his graveyard that have the potential to come back. Rishkar Pima Renegade, so he's giving each of them a plus one plus one counter. So that'll be a three four gifted Aetherborn, which is, uh, well, it is enough of a threat to get a lightning axe to the face. And another Stitchwing Scob goes into the graveyard. Now, one thing I was going to say about the Gifted Aetherborn is, honestly, it's a little bit risky running Gifted Aetherborn in a two-color deck because it requires two black mana. I mean, ideally, you want to be able to play Gifted Aetherborn on turn two, which is most likely gonna, not going to happen in a two-color deck, even with dual lands. You know, you'd be lucky to get it down on third turn, reliably. But uh, then again, you know, Standard is a slower format than in the past, so, you know, a card like Gifted Aetherborn, which is a powerful card, you know, 2-3, Death Touch, Life Link, you know, even if you get it down on turn 3 or 4 or 5 or later, it's still going to have a relevant effect on the board. Now, Verderous Gear Hulk, on the other hand, is always a good choice for any deck that runs green, because at 5 mana, you can go with, you know, say make him an 8-8 eight, eight trample, or in this particular instance, split the counters 2-2 two and two to give yourself a 5-5 five, five and a 6-6 six, six trample. The other side grabs a Stitchwing Scob, discarding an Island and a Tormenting Voice. He attacks in for 3 flying. Now, he does have two Fevered Visions, and the other side has seven cards in his hand. So, it's highly unlikely that he's going to be able to get in under... What is it? has four or more cards. So, he would have to have one card in hand at the end of his turn. Which is... Not going to happen. So, he's going to be taking four damage from the uh, Fevered Visions. Ah, sacrificing the Scob to Elder Deep Fiend, which will let him tap down the other creatures, which will buy him some more time, because honestly, if he can get... If he goes with the Sanctum of Ugin and gets another Elder Deep Fiend, you know, that would be enough, I think, to buy him enough time so that Fevered Visions will kill. Now, he didn't sacrifice the Sanctum of Ugin. Okay, never mind. The uh, Golgari deck is going to concede. And I don't blame him. He was probably going to lose anyway, because, you know, doubled Fevered Visions, when your hand is full, is a real pain to try and get under, especially when you're on low life count. So you have to be trying to get rid of your hand. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to be slowly pinged away by the Fevered Visions. That's one of the pains in the butt about is it control, is they can just grind you down. You know, there are excellent ways that they can slow you down, giving them more time to deal more damage with their fevered visions, or, like in that particular instance, he was able to deal three damage and then use the scob that he attacked with to play the uh, the Eldrazi so that it slowed down his opponent for another turn. But, uh, you know, is it isn't always going to be able to do that kind of thing. And Golgari Aggro, like any aggro deck, has the capability of doing a lot of damage very quickly. And right there is one of the very rare instances in a two-color deck where you're going to be able to play a card like Gifted Aetherborn on turn two. Transgress the Mind, a very powerful card against Is It Control, because if he has one of those really powerful cards in his hand already, 
that you really want to get rid of, you get to. And he gets rid of Fevered Visions, which is one of the best win conditions that Is It Control has, because it's just sitting there in the background doing work. You know, unless you destroy that enchantment, it's just going to sit there and keep doing damage and keep doing damage. Now, thanks to cards like Gifted Aetherborn having lifelink, you know, two damage from Fever Visions isn't as big a deal because you're gaining two life off of Gifted Aetherborn. So they deal two, you gain two, it comes out as a wash while you're still doing two damage to your opponent. Winding Constrictor, attacking in with the Aetherborn again. And unfortunately for the Izzet deck, he's only got one red open. Oh! I was going to say, I... You know, he throws the Lightning Axe at him. I'm surprised. And he discards Elder Deep Fiend to do it. Or did he? Oh, Key to the City was on... Okay, so Lightning Axe, he discarded a Shock, and then an Elder Deep Fiend, he discarded two Key to the City. And... Rishkar gets Shocked, so 4-5 Winding Constrictor, though. Izzet's in a bit of trouble here. He's consistently taking damage, he's... Uh, getting lower on cards. He's got the same card count as the Golgari deck, but that's not really a selling point at this point, because uh, the Golgari deck is supposed to get lower on cards. The Izzet deck is a control deck. They want more cards in their hands so that they have answers. But uh, like I was going to say earlier about the Gifted Aetherborn is, since it has three toughness, Shock, which is a very good creature control spell in standard right now, isn't going to work on it. Ooh, and another Lightning Axe, discarding prized Amalgam this time, which, you know, he wanted to discard anyway. Walking Ballista. Now, if the Winding Constrictor had stayed in play, then, you know, Walking Ballista is alright. As it is, personally, unless you have, you know, things like Winding Constrictors or other ways of putting plus one plus one counters on Walking Ballista, you know, this guy is not good, in my opinion, as a two-drop 1-1 one, one that can ping for one. He's not. I don't understand why people love this guy so much. Okay, key to the city, discarding Fiery Temper to kill off Tireless Tracker before he gets going any further. But, now that I've seen this deck in action, you know... With Rishkar and Winding Constrictor and Verdurus Gear Hulk, and you know, he's got a ton of ways to put plus one plus one counters on him. I can see the appeal of Walking Ballista. I still don't think he's a very good card, but I can see the appeal now that I've seen some of these cards. But, you know, back to the situation at hand. Ooh, Transgress the Mind. Okay, using Key to the City again. Gets rid of Spire... No. What? And... Oh, containing Spire Bluff Canal. Sorry. Elder Deep Fiend. I was like, wait a minute. So, one damage from Walking Ballista. And he pays the two to draw a card, which he pretty much has to at this point. He is very low on cards. His opponent has a card advantage, a life advantage, a board advantage, even though it's a very minimal one at this point. The only advantage he has right now is that his opponent is on three land, which does limit what he can play. You know, for example, right now, if he has a Verderous Gear Hulk in his hand, it's stuck in his hand. I mean, it would be a great time to play one, because then you could buff up the Walking Ballista. You know, you could throw all the counters on it, or just a couple, or, you know, whatever you wanted, since it's the Verderous Gear Hulk, but... 
Okay, so Rishkar Pima Renegade. Plus one, plus one here, plus one, plus one here. So now he has a total of five mana if he wanted to tap down all of his stuff next turn. But he gets to attack in for two with the Walking Ballista. And one of the things about Walking Ballista that is actually good is coming up here. Ooh, he gets into the land, taps down, plays Verderous Gear Hulk, is the fact that when your opponent is low on life, okay, is it concedes. Uh, I was going to say, once he gets low on life, you know, you get in with the Walking Ballista for combat damage. You know, say he put all four on. That would have been six damage, then he could pop plus one, plus one counters off for one damage, and one damage, and one damage, until his opponent was dead. You know, a 6-6 six, six Walking Ballista means that if your opponent is on 12 and doesn't stop the Ballista from hitting him in the face, he's dead. But, you know, though, honestly, I'm still not sold on the Ballista. And that's the last I'll say about how I don't like Ballista. But, you know, it does have a place. Now that I've seen this deck, I understand its place. But uh, the video is over 10 minutes long, so I'm going to end it here. That was a pretty even matchup, I would think. You know, is it control versus Golgari aggro? And if you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I will see you in the next video.